Well, joining us now is Dr. Dushanta Jayavira, an infectious disease specialist and a professor at the University of Miami's Miller School of Medicine. Doctor, we got a lot of questions for you, so let's get right to it. We just came out of this story <laughs> questioning the veracity of these antibody tests. So can you set the record straight here? Can we trust these antibody tests, and do they mean that we could be immune from COVID-19? I mean, it depends. It actually depends uh, which test you're using at what time uh, sequence of the exposure. So the other thing that you have to consider when you do antibody testing is that if there's a low prevalence of the virus, uh, the antibodies, the positive predictive value, that means if you t have a positive test that is truly positive, uh, goes down. So you can get false positives. So the, the particular, the reporter you uh, talked about, as the San Francisco physician commented, uh, it may be because she had the symptoms, she had anosmia, and then she initially was negative because early in the disease you don't have antibodies. Mm. Then later on, after about a week or so, the early IgG, IgM comes up. So that came positive. I see. And then the IgM disappears and the IgG comes up. So which means that the patient, that the reporter was exposed to, uh, did have a, uh, a infection, and most likely, and uh, the antibodies demonstrate that. Hmm. Yeah, and that's three tests, and she mentioned that there were more than hmm. 200 of them, so it really just depends on yeah. which one you take. Doctor, let's talk about a vaccine now. The race, of course, is on to develop a vaccine. Many different companies are working on one right now. How close are we to actually having one that works? So, so there are multiple vaccines that has been developed. Uh, for example, uh, University of Miami would be starting Moderna vaccine within the next month and then probably the Janssen vaccine the next month. And then if you look at the vaccine scene, there are multiple uh, uh, sponsors, uh, biotech companies developing over 40 vaccines. The ones that are really ahead are the, the Oxford vaccine, which they have done quite uh, well in the UK. And now they have ex uh, uh, started doing it in, uh, in Brazil and uh, South Africa. And there's also the the vaccine from China called ChinaVax, which is uh, been which has been tested in China. And of course, the South Koreans and all the other people are also developing vaccines. The problem is that these vaccines are in clinical trial phase, which means that they are placebo controlled. So if you go on a study, you're never sure whether you're going to get the vaccine or you're going to get the placebo. Mm. And it all depends how long uh, it'll take to re uh, enroll the subjects and what the the preliminary results would show so while we wait on the vaccine we have to hope that uh, treatment regimens for those who really get seriously ill from COVID-19 have improved so have they do we have a better handle on how to treat people who really get sick from this illness mm -hmm. we, we do actually we we have uh, two drugs that's been now for cytokine storm the dexamethasone has been approved uh, which was shown by the British uh, researchers and the uh, remdesivir, which was from Gilead's, which has been approved by the FDA. And overall, it is the site of, uh, so there are two ways of dealing with uh, COVID. So the one is the using the antivirals, the second one is uh, controlling the cytokine storm. There are multiple drugs that have been used in clinical trials and uh, in a, a, a you know, stand of care of controlling this. So I think we have a pretty good handle of taking care of sub, uh, patients with COVID. Uh, in the United States. Hmm. And doctor, here in South Florida, counties are requiring masks to be worn in public, indoors and outdoors in some cases, but we certainly have seen a resistance to people who don't want to wear the mask. They don't think that they should be told that they need to wear a mask. So how do health officials break certain myths and encourage people not just to wear a mask, but also to get vaccinated when that time does come? I think this is really important for people like you to to, to uh, get the word out that uh, things like masks are such a simple thing to be doing and then also the social distancing. These simple things can save a lot of lives and we have to take this really seriously. Tony Fauci have been talking about this from for the last three months and we just have to get it into our heads to do that. Uh, regarding the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I, I, uh, the uh, you, you ask about the uh, resistance to uh, to masks, uh, I think it's very important for us to convince people that this is far, it's not us, it's not me, it's us, all of us mm -hmm. have to look after ourselves. So that's really important 
for us to wear masks all the time when you're in public places. Doctor, lastly, uh, if someone does in fact uh, become infected with COVID-19, in your view, what is their level of responsibility? I think the most important thing is that you have to be absolutely honest with the contact tracing. Most countries that have controlled this, especially China and uh, in European countries, they did absolutely wonderful contact tracing, especially in Germany. And if we, we really have to tell the truth and tell our health department and the contact tracers exactly everybody you came into contact with so that we can, we can isolate and quarantine these people so that we spread the, you stop the spread of this disease. This is so important. All right, Dr. Jayawira from the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine, mm -hmm. thanks so much for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, it's my pleasure, anytime. We'll Thank be you. right back.